missing values right so what do i mean by missing values Class is a different thing. We'll come. We'll talk about class much later. Um, suppose I have, again, this, let's go back. Take a real scenario, right? You're filling in some survey questionnaire, and then I'm going to take all the data from you, and then I'm going to build a decision tree that allows me to predict whether you'll buy a machine in my or or buy a new new computer from a shop or a new TV from a shop or something, right? And then the next somebody comes in, and then I, I'm supposed to just look at you and say, okay, he's a, he's going to buy a computer. He's not. Right? So, I should be able to classify people like that. But then when I fill in the survey, I may just not answer some questions. Right? So, I will have a data point. Right? So, I am assuming that x i is drawn from r p right? or, or whatever, right? uh, whatever the space that I am drawing x i from. But for each x i, I assume I already know the values x i 1 to x i p. Right? So far, we have never talked about the case where some of these might be unknown some of these might be missing they might be missing for a variety of reasons right so one could be right uh, or could be a no response in a survey or something right the other could be could be due to noise removal what do i mean by that i look at my patient record data i find that somebody has a temperature of 223 <laughs> <laughs> so obviously some noise there right do i make it 22 or 23 i mean or 22.3 Right, nothing seems right. Right, <laughs> I don't. I don't tell you what uh, scale it is in, but still, it still doesn't seem right. So, what do you do? Just remove it. Okay. So, let's just assume that the nurse didn't record the temperature of this patient. Right. So, you remove noise from your data. You might lose some attributes. Hi, everything else about the patient, I just don't know whether he was running a fever or not when he came into my clinic. Right. So, likewise. You could just not have recorded it, right? That's equivalent to no response. So that guy must have might have come with a like a bleeding right hand with, with his just hanging off a wrist or something, <laughs> and you're not going to say, "Hey, first get his temperature and put it in there." I don't want any missing values, right? <laughs> right? So, so, so the things just might not just get recorded, you know. Uh, so those kinds of things are that's equivalent to no response, right? So anything else? Yeah, exactly. So that's what I was going to say. Malfunction, right? So it's just that uh, you, you might be recording sensor data from uh, somewhere, and then the sensor just turns off for a while. Right? Maybe it overheated or something went wrong, and just for for just a while, you don't see any of this data uh, being recorded. So there are a variety of reasons why you could have missing values in your data. In fact, uh, uh, if you work with real data, right? More often than not, you will have significant missing values. Right? In fact, uh, uh, when I work with some data. I have had uh, cases where uh, people have given me data where some attributes were missing in more than 80 percent of the data points, right. So, what do you do in that cases? <coughs> Remove the attribute itself, okay. You may as well not worry about the attribute because you are not going to be able to use it in any practical uh, setting, right. So, we just remove the attribute itself. But in other cases, if it is missing only in like 5 percent or 10 percent of the data points, you do not want to throw away that data point right throwing away 20 percent of the data point is still a big thing right and yeah so and you do not want to remove the attribute also because it is available in 80 percent of the data points and right? you do not want to throw the attribute away you do not want to throw the data points away right so there are two things you can throw the column away you can throw the row away right if it is missing in more than 80 percent you can directly throw the column away but it is somewhere in the middle right some some are small numbers then you do not know what to do throw the column or throw the attribute uh, throw the row don't both huh? exactly so uh, there's a whole lots of different ways of handling this missing value the statisticians have studied these for eons right 
So they have come up with many, many techniques for handling missing values. And why am I bringing it up while we are talking about decision trees and not other classifiers? Because there are some techniques which are peculiar to decision trees, okay, which are not available for other classifiers. I am going to talk about all of these, right? So that I mean, in general, also you could use some of these techniques. The first one, uh, right? So we'll give it a fancy name. Called imputation. Right? So imputation is essentially filling in a value for the missing attribute right so how do you fill in a value for the missing attribute do the mean the simplest thing is to do the mean right? you could do a regression on the attribute right so you could regress on the attribute in fact what is the what is the best way of doing regression on the attribute is to do it in a class conditioned fashion use the class also because you are talking about the training data here, right. So, use the class also as in part of your regression or part of your averaging. So, what you can essentially do is okay, take all the data points that are of class 1 okay, and use those to predict the value of the missing attribute for in that set of data points, right. Suppose I have like a 100,000 data points and let us say 1000 are of class 1 and of which 4 of them are missing some attribute 3. I will just take those 1000 data points, right? I will do a regression and predict for those 4 data points. I will use the remaining 9996 data points as my training data and fit the curve and now I can predict what that one missing point is. So, why is this kind of conditioning on the class useful? that feature in, in turn to get the class. So, if there is any kind of variation right the correlation between that feature and the class right this will help me preserve it right. If I am going to do this across the entire 100,000 data sets I will lose the correlation I will lose the effect right? at least for these attributes it will get polluted right but this way I will be able to retain it. So, what if there was no code You do not lose anything you do not lose anything by doing it this way. Right. If there is correlation, you actually preserve it. If there is no correlation, you do not lose anything. The attribute has no relation to the actual class itself. I'm sorry? That particular attribute you are using has no relation to the class. That is exactly what he was asking. He is just saying, what if there is no correlation? You do not lose anything by doing it this way. Yeah. Right? So, this is imputation. There are different ways of doing imputation. You can use the mean, you can use the class condition mean, right? You can use uh, regression for doing the imputation. and. Um, now, there is something really more complicated technique that is something called uh, multiple imputation right. Oh, and using the regression for doing the imputation is uh, also called full information imputation. I told you the statisticians have been at it for a while right. So, they have all kinds of so full information imputation is because you are using all the known attributes for predicting the unknown attribute right. When you are doing the mean you are only using that attribute in the same attribute in the other data points. multiple imputation is a little weird thing. So, what you do is you use all the data that you have right and set up a probability distribution over the missing attribute values right. Like I said I have 996 data points in which that attribute is not missing right. I will use that and figure out okay for if for red what is the probability, for blue what is the probability, for green what is the probability, for discrete ones it is easy right. For continuous values I will have to pick some distribution let us say I pick a Gaussian right and say okay I will find what is the mean and the variance of the Gaussian that will predict the missing attribute value okay. Now what I do is I draw samples from this distribution 
and use those samples to fill in the missing values. I will get one data set. I can draw another set of samples and fill in the missing values. I will get another data set. That is why it is called multiple imputation. So, I can create multiple copies of the data point by repeatedly sampling from this distribution. And uh, in some cases, this has much better variance, right? much lower variance than uh, using some of the other methods. So, even though this, this uh, entails significantly more computation. Okay, so imputation is one. There is another uh, there is another way to handle this. I just introduce a new value for the variable, right, and I will call it missing. Why would this be useful? Exactly. So there, is, there might be some kind of systematic reason for which the data goes missing, and if I instead of trying to somehow guess what the value should be, if I actually pay attention to the fact that it went missing, right? That would be useful. So I, I didn't see who said that. Oh, okay, fine. Yeah. So. In, in, in fact, it is actually a very practical, uh, practically useful thing, right? Because quite often the reason it goes missing is there is a specific reason for it, and you can, in, in fact, the fact that it is missing might be predictive of something, you know. So, how likely is my patient to recover? The temperature reading is missing, mm. right? So, those kinds of things. So, use something called surrogate splits. So, what is a surrogate split? Okay. So, surrogate splits actually are uh, serve a slightly different function, right? Both for imputation and this, this can be used during training itself, right? But the surrogate splits thing uh, we typically use during uh, testing, you can also use it during training, I suppose. Uh, the basic idea is this for every attribute right that I have I will try to pick another attribute okay, that tends to split the data in the same way. Right. Suppose let us say again let us take the same example I have 100,000 data points I split on attribute say 3 okay, and I get 2 groups. right? this has uh, say 70,000 data points, this has another 30,000 data points. I split on some other attribute let us say 4, okay. and again I get two groups, one has 68,000 data points, other has 32,000 data points. And not only that, it turns out that the intersection of the 70,000 and 68,000 is something like 65,000 and the intersection of the other two is something like 25,000. So, essentially 3 and 4 give me more or less the same splits. we are finding correlation, we are not really reducing it here. So, we are finding correlation. What we do is if we had selected attribute 3 to split on our tree and then we suddenly find that attribute 3 is missing in the data point, we just split on attribute 4 and behave as if we split on attribute 3 and go on. So, this is what I mean by surrogate, right? it is like putting proxy. <laughs> right? So, I have attribute 4 can put proxy for attribute 3 and then you just continue working with your tree. Right, so, that is essentially what surrogate splits are and it does it exactly finds that right, it actually looks at correlation between the attributes and tries to exploit that. Okay. So, as you can see that imputation right, and adding this new categorical values could work with any kind of classifier that you are working with, right? It, I mean, as long as you have a way of handling categorical attributes, it is just one more value that you are handling. While the surrogate split something very specific to trees, 
right. Likewise, we are going to look at fragment, which is also something very specific to trees. So, this is a little subtle. So, what I am going to do is the following, right. So, I come to a point, right? I am going to make some query, I am going to make is x3 less than 5. That is a query that I am going to make. It is a variable x3 less than 5. That is a query I have to make at this point in the tree, right? And what do I find? My data point does not have x3. You wanted to use the missing huh? How would you use the label missing? Uh, that is for categorical, right? We are talking about categorical attributes. So, it will be like, okay, I am going to R, M, B, Y, G missing like that right or I, if I am going to do it into subsets, I will put missing into one of the subsets right. But suppose this is there x3 is less than 5, so what do I do? x3 is missing right. What I do is I look at the all the data points for which x3 was not missing okay. I will see what fraction went down this way, let us say 0 0.6 went here, 0 0.4 went here. So, what is 0 0.6? all the data points that did not have x3 missing, 60 percent of those were less than 0.5 and 40 percent of those had x3 greater than 0.5. So, now what I do is I am looking at one data point right, one data point that came here, I am going to split it into two right. So, it is going to 0.6 of the data point is going to travel down the left and 0.4 of the data point is going to travel down the right. So, what I do is it is essentially I am actually letting the data point travel all the way and it will reach a leaf right and the leaf is going to make some prediction okay. So, with some probability it is class 1, some probability it is class 2, some probability is class 3 right. So, the 0 0.6 part will make one prediction, the 0 0.4 part will make one prediction, I will make a weighted combination of the two predictions and I will output that as my final. Yes, it is. Seems like quantum mechanics, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, let us say I go down, I finally reach here, and I say it is class 1 with probability, I do not know, 0.6, and class 2 with probability 0.4, and this one winds down somewhere, and I say this is class 1 with probability 0.2. And class 2 with probability 0 0.8, right. So, overall thing that I will report is okay, the probability of class 1 is Does that make sense? No, 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 this is uh, maybe this is a bad choice. Does that make sense? I am using it only once, right. So, what is the meaning of saying 0.6 of the data point goes down this side? It is essentially I will go all the way down and I will say that finally I will use the 0.6, right. I am not using the 0.6 anywhere here. I am just telling you what is the semantics of saying 0.6 goes down this way. So, the reason we are carrying this weight along is at some point further down the line, if I have another missing attribute and I decide to split it, I will not be splitting 1, I will be splitting only 0.6, right. So, this can get weird right. So, so I can have a data point which has multiple missing attributes travelling down more than two paths and it will reach multiple leaves and then I eventually combine all the leaves. So, this is called uh, I mean this I am calling this as a fragmenting method right. Again this is pretty unique to trees. So, if you think about it this is somewhat similar to doing multiple imputation. Does not that mean that this particular value is dependent on the other values? What is it? This particular value is dependent on the other values. Which value? Other data sets are going this way in that way, so that because of that, this one is behaving like that. 
of course the whole idea is to use training data to make a prediction on this data point right the whole the subject is predicated on using the behavior of other data points to predict the output of new data right so it shouldn't matter right so the last way of handling missing values is something called em okay it's expectation maximization right and it's going to keep cropping up all over the place as we go along uh, but uh, we will do it we will actually formally deal with, uh, deal with expectation maximization uh, much later. Um, so yeah, just be aware that uh, when we look at EM, this is one of the applications of EM, okay? handling missing values. I am not going to get into this because it is a pretty involved thing and uh, in fact if you think you have been having difficulty with any of the concepts we have covered so far in the class, you have not seen anything yet. Right. So, EM is the one thing which everybody struggles with uh, when they look at it first time. Okay. So, so we will come to that later.